episode of Galfrey Pirate Radio where we're now delving into the new season of Doctor Who. Um, I am your host Davey Beauchamp and these are his co-hosts Angela Pritchett and, and Drew Meyer. So let's begin with Pond Life because of course they uh, they teased us for all the entire week um, but here's the thing five one minute long episodes are better than five non-existent episodes. Exactly. So what did you guys think and of And it was more life? Amy and Rory and an Ood. And an Ood on a Lou. Yes, and an Ood on a Lou. And a butler Ood. I wanted an Ood to be my butler. It'd be awesome. <laughs> I mean, fun life was fine, right? You know, it... It was cute! And it kind of it set us up for the first episode with the whole thing with Amy and Rory. Okay, this is probably going to have spoilers, so stop right now if there's spoilers. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, no, yeah, yeah. spoilers. Right, obviously. Spoilers. So, David, what did you think of Pond Life? Um, there should have been... Uh, honestly, it was cute. I liked the first part. And then I thought they got a little off track with the Ood. Um, and then in the very last episode, they throw in the, the trouble um, in their marriage, which I think they should have got into ha halfway through it. Yeah. I, I, think, I, I think it took, took them too long to get to that because that was the entire point. I mean, that's what they even uh, talked about it before he even came out was to show that there was trouble in paradise. Yeah. And it just took them way too long, and they were having too much fun with the slapstick gags with the Ood. Um, and I just, it was nice, don't get me wrong, yeah, it was great seeing, you know, Doctor Who, you know, a week before Doctor Who started, but um, I don't know, it, I don't think, it, I don't think it, it did what it was supposed to do. I thought it was just supposed to be fun and get us excited for Doctor Who, and that's what it did for me. Yeah, I mean, it, it. It was. I felt it was. It was. It was like the fifth book of the Hitchhikers trilogy. You know, it was mostly harmless. Um, and there were some amusing parts, but again, how much can you actually accomplish in five minutes? In five if you minutes. watch all of it in five minutes as one episode, the last part was, or one of the parts was two minutes. In six minutes, if you watch all six minutes it's together, um, yeah. it, it feels like one little episode. That's a decent intro. And let's face it, because I think we all agreed upon life as we've talked about it. Q, mm -hmm. anything else we want to discuss? It moves us into, of course, episode one. Which, before we even talk about that, can I just do one thing? Yes, go for it. Bravo, internet. Bravo, everyone who saw the premiere and didn't spoil it. Yeah. The internet shut its collective well, yapper for an entire week. I don't know. I did, I did two week. things. I heard the word souffle girl, and I heard the word, holy crap, Coleman's in the first episode. Ooh. I didn't hear it at all. I yeah, did, I, because I was messaging you going, I just cried, and I'm not going to say anything else. No, you almost spoiled it for me. By saying I cried? No, by saying that I can't wait to see how they bring in the new companion. How does that spoil it for you? How does that spoil anything? Because because it puts it in my mind that maybe the companion's in that episode. Well, then I totally just gave you like the wrong thing in your mind. I that had no anything. idea it was coming. Just none. I, I was watching at a friend's house, and and luckily the kids were asleep because I may have shouted no, copious amounts of profanity. The funny thing is, is I didn't even realize that was her at first. Oh, really? I mean, Honestly. Got mad at me for going, really? <laughs> yeah, I was just like, I, I had no idea. And then I was like, wait, I was like, she looks really familiar. I don't know why. Then it creeped into the back of my head. Wait, that's Coleman. And so I go on I I am or I go on, onto the Tartarus wiki, which is the one the one site I like to use. Wait, while you were watching the episode? No, no, no. This oh, was afterwards. like this is like two days, like a day later. Oh, okay. After I'm watching it for like the third time, I'm like, there's something odd going on here. Speaking of, just in case you're wondering why there isn't a gray sound dampening board behind us, and we are that filming outside. And there's no Dalek as well. We are out in like the beautiful tree area. We're in the arboretum. It's beautiful, um, pretty, because way different than normal. It's not like we're filming this in our mom's basement, like normal. This is an ode to... Uh, nature! Nature! But <laughs> I, I'm wearing gonna... my kick-ass 
Doctor Who socks. Oh, you've got your Dwardus socks yes. on. Nice. So, I don't know if you can see that. This, of course, makes this filming this in the park slightly yeah. that more interesting for the yeah. people walking behind us going. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, episode seven, but, Asylum of the Daleks. But I'll say this, one, one thing I did check was, I was like, was that the name of the companion? You know, were they using her, the right name? Um, once I realized it was Coleman. Uh-huh. Same last name, different first name. Oh, so, so the Clara Oswin? So are we looking at daughter, or I mean sister, daughter, mother? I mean, I, I can't wait to see what the, the connection is going to end up being. Well, it's going to be assumed that you have seen the episode if you're tuning into this. If you haven't really, let's turn this off spoilers, and watch the episode. Spoilers, and, and because we've it. already spoiled it for you. <laughs> we, well, we were already talking about the puns, like, and the spoilers but there. But then so. we totally just did it again. Anyway, so, yeah. so that being listen. said, yeah. um, all right, so give me, because there's going to be a lot to talk about with both of these episodes. Give me one thing you liked about uh, Asylum of the Dogs, Davey. Uh, um, Angela. I like Oswin, and I liked all the like human Daleks. That was really really cool. I thought they should have had more of them in there. Oh oh the um the Robo Men. Yeah. Terminator Daleks. Yes. Uh, I thought we they don't have an official name for them yet. For th I thought they should have addressed them a little bit more. I thought they were really cool. Um, and it was just a really fun episode. I mean, it was. Not my favorite so far. Hold on, no, no. Season, I just want one, one, one good thing. Yes. Okay, so uh, really okay, so uh, then Angela, what didn't you like about? Give me one thing that you didn't, didn't like, like about the episode. I did think that um, if you hadn't seen Pond Life, just bringing in the whole Rory Amy conflict was a bit like in your face. Well, how far, how long was it? Had it been for the Doctor since the last time he visited them? I can't remember what the last month was compared to when it was the first episode right it, it had been a while yeah it had so. been a while but still it was kind of just like they were separated and the doctor just magically made them together again so it's kind of, that was kind of in the course of that like 10-15 minutes that, that really did happen in this episode I thought that was a little abrupt but I mean I liked most of the episode there wasn't really anything I can say I absolutely hated alright how about you Davey okay what I really, one of the things I really liked was the fact we learned something very interesting that happened at Demon's Run that we did not know about until now. Amy can't have any more kids. Which I wonder, did they harvest her eggs? Did they, uh, did they sterilize her? I think there's more of a story there that might come up later. And I don't know, that really stood out to me and I, and I really, really, really liked that. Did you know that the name Oswin means friend of the Lord? I did not know that. Yeah, that's what it means. Uh, it's actually a boy's name, too, which is kind of interesting. Um, all right, well, as you guys know, and as anyone who has watched the show when we talked about dogs knows, I don't like dogs. Um, uh, I don't understand, I didn't at least understand the reasoning behind why people thought they were scary because you know, didn't grow up as a child hiding behind the sofa. Who actually should be talking about this hiding behind the bench? But um, Stephen Moffat said that his intention for this episode was to make the dogs scary again. Do you think uh, he has succeeded in that? I've never really thought the dogs were scary. Did you make them at least slightly less well, not I mean, scary they, for you they in tried this one? To, I think they tried to personify them a little bit because there were more of the human style dogs or the skeletons. Yeah. And Daleks oh, and stuff Daleks. like that. So, I mean, like, there was that where you could be like, oh, crap, anything could be a Dalek. Davey, you read comic books in D.C. for the, the 1980s. You remember the Manhunter? Uh, yeah. So, uh, did this at all remind you of the Manhunters? No, I mean, what it re I mean, it reminded me of the, the other human dialect slaves that they've had in the past. They just took it to the next level. They evolved. Sure, yeah, and they weren't wearing those um, triangular mm -hmm. helmets like they were in... Um, Whatever the episode was with the Daleks and the weird alien. That we didn't they, they, they've done it a few times. Um, but no, I mean, I thought he actually made the dialects less scary for the fact now they have nothing to be afraid of. They have no reason to evolve anymore. Oh, because of what happens at the end. Right. Okay, well, do you want to talk about that now or do you want to talk about anything else uh, catching up to it? Well, the one thing that the, uh, you asked her what she didn't like about it 
Um, the one thing that disappointed me is there was no mention of the human factor dialects. That's the one thing that really bothered me. Um, especially you have this asylum with all these, uh, you know, damaged dialects, but we don't have any mention of the human factor ones. Sure. Which, I mean, it could be the fact because that's a lost episode. It could be the fact that, you know, not many people remember them. But, I mean, they they play a key, key role in, in the history of the dialects. Sure. Well, we also um, don't have, uh, was it Dalek Sec? Um, with the Dalek on a human body from um, Dalek's Take Manhattan? or Thank Dalek's God, in, in Manhattan. I hated that with a passion. <laughs> hated that. Actually, you know, it's funny that you um, you mentioned uh, this uh, because I think on the magazine, um, was it SFX magazine, which is what they have in the UK, I think it was Doctor Who, um, they, they've gotten some flack for, for um, spoiling the, um, the Robo Daleks with the, the eye stock coming out of the middle of the head, like was on the cover of one of the magazines. Mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, come on, if you weren't expecting that. I thought that was awesome. Like, I wasn't yeah. expecting it, and no. I absolutely I absolutely loved it. What, but, but of course, that's one of the reasons why I love doing the show, is I don't go out there looking for the spoilers. Sure. The only thing I, I ever get spoiled for myself are what we see in official trailers or press releases now. Um, I don't go seeking out, seeking out that information anymore, because I, I am actually enjoying the surprise factor now. Absolutely. No, and I agree, and I understand that a lot of um, shows... Uh, people like, for, for instance, they, they went ahead and they saw, uh, go to press releases and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and uh, go to the advanced screens of it. Um, actually, I wrote down a couple of things um, I was curious to see. Um, <laughs> actually, okay, I may have eight or nine pages on the Asylum of the Daleks alone. I've watched it twice. Um, I, yeah. No, question. No, no, no. I'm not going to go over all the eight pages. Uh, there were just a couple of things I was I was going to point out. That, 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 di that dialect building at the beginning, silly or not silly? The giant um, yeah. statue of the yeah, dog? Yeah, building thing. I did not like that at all. I thought that was kind of over the top. Oh, well, here's here's my main problem. I I actually didn't really pay attention to that because I was like, crap, they're on Scaro. They're on Scaro. Wait, didn't Scaro get blown up? several times and then of course I forget that we're in Moffat's new two verse which everything got rebooted um, but uh, but no I, I think Scarrow did in one of the one of the past things I'd have to have my my handbook of dialects I think it actually did come back again gotcha okay because that's that's a problem people don't realize with the history of the dialects more so than any more so than any other who villain the, the doctor has rewritten their timeline more times than I can count and then the dialects started doing it themselves sure with their own time machines yeah um, did I find it? Did I, I didn't care for it one way or the other. Um, uh, it may have spoiled the ending. And we'll get to the, of course, the ending of the episode. Um, towards it, 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 I felt that it actually made me guess what the ending, our surprise ending, was going to be ahead of time. But before we get to that, um, all right, hold on a second. There was some really fun stuff on here. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Daughters of a Parliament. The Daleks were the most destructive evil force in the entire universe. The most hated enemies. They have a democratic parliament where they all get together and, and talk about what? What they should be doing next. And it looks kind of like the parliament from Star Wars. It, it did from feel a little Phantom menace -y. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And, I, and not, I'm not faulting them. I mean, we had a... But there was a Dalek prime minister yeah. in a jar. Head in a jar. Um... I, I gotta say that when I saw the cover to Doctor Who magazine and they said all the Daleks ever, um, I got really excited. And then I, after watching the episodes, I realized that that must it was obviously just BBC trying to get us excited about it. It was not the intention of whomever to make all the Daleks ever because obviously, hello squirrel, there weren't. Um, but uh, it was nice to see more Russell T. Davies era Daleks and less Skittles Daleks yeah. or I Daleks or Mighty Morphin Power Daleks. Mighty Morphin Power Daleks. I hadn't heard that one until uh, recently. That's pretty awesome. Um, well, I almost think that the the, the, the Mighty Morphin dialects. I don't think we're going to see that many. I think there is. I think they're the elite. Sure. You know, and I think they don't want. They're they rather have all these foot soldiers. You know. I, th I think, and this is just from, from reading after, um, what is it, Victory of the Daleks? Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think essentially what happened was they premiered these new iDaleks, and they're like, yes, everyone's going to love these, and everyone, well, that's garbage. Um, and there was such a negative backlash that they did just that. They said, 
no, 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 you misunderstood us. You're going to have your regular bronze, gray, black, white, tinny Daleks, but these guys are going to be, every once in a while you'll see them. Because we got a Dalek Supreme up there with the, the Dalek Prime Minister. Um, I, I got to say, I was something really wonderful um, was spoiled for me in the trailer uh, when the Daleks say, save us. Uh, it was a brilliant moment, and unfortunately, it was completely spoiled in the in the trailer. And uh, I would have loved to have been surprised by that because it showed it out of context. And the squirrel's like this close to us right now. Um, he really likes to do the themes. Here, in the back. He, he, I promise. There's there's he's something missing to part of his ear. Aww. All right. Um, there's a theme in this episode. Um, <laughs> Oh, there's, there's actually, I'm noticing there's a theme in the episode, and there's definitely a theme, obviously Daleks is the theme of this episode, but another one is memory. Um, there's certainly a number of times people have said, remember me, and my notes are just going, he said, remember me. <laughs> I said that again. Damn, they did it four times in that episode. Um, oh, okay. We're at the point now, they're at the parliament. <laughs> I have to ask, why did the Daleks go through this? All right, did you not feel... I felt, and maybe you, maybe you didn't feel, that the whole reason for bringing the Doctor and Amy and Rory to the Parliament of the Daleks was a little odd. It's nature. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's okay. Acne. It's a bee. Are you allergic? No, you, but okay. I just don't want to get stung. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> well, it's a bumblebee. He yes. It's a Vespa form, let's face it. Yeah, right. when he... When he... He stings me. We'll see how Someone that robbed its church last I, I week. I will suck the poison out of you. <laughs> Fantastic, and luckily we'll have to save battery space for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, here, here's, here was my problem with it. It's like, okay, apparently there's a force field around the planet of the Asylum of the Daleks. Yeah. Something the Doctor has known about in legend, but never mentioned before. That's fine. I can, I can, I'm okay with, with that. The force field is impregnable. Except for spaceships that apparently crashed into the planet. Yeah. I'm not sure how that they happened. They don't seem to break up at the force field and explode. No. So they're going to, uh, they they kidnap all uh, three members of our group. By the way, the bus driver and it in that seems episode. So easy. Very easy. So Daleks, if you ever wanted to kill the Doctor, apparently involve him in a plan before you get to that plan, and then kill him, because they captured him. But I'll say one thing interesting about that: they finally give a reason for why they have not killed him all these times. Yes, they have. I, I, I wanted to get to that one yeah, next. because I thought that was brilliant. Oh, good. You think that's brilliant. Okay. I did. All right. I liked it, too. But uh, here's the thing. Two problems with it. One, why did they... I, don't, I still don't get it. I watched the episode twice. I don't understand why the Doctor was sent in, because if the whole point of this yeah. is to eventually blow up the Daleks, their point about not wanting to blow up the Daleks because they're beautiful, hatred is beautiful. I love that. I think it's a beautiful philosophy. Yeah. And they haven't killed the Doctor because he they hate him so much and he hates them so much that there's a form of symbiotic art that's happening. Yeah. A little more touchy-feely than I'm, I'm comfortable with the Daleks, but, um, but the problem is this. We don't want to blow up the planet because we love them and they're beautiful. So we'd like you to go down there, shut off the device so we can blow up the planet. Okay. You know that they're going to blow up the planet with the Doctor on it, so they can kill him. They can rid themselves of this enemy. Well, I just feel like they obviously have never played poker. They should have just, while they were ahead, just killed them while they had him. But I guess we wouldn't have had the show. Yeah, then the show would be not Doctor Who. It would be. It would be Doctor Who. Well, it would be the general. Daleks. And they've tried that. The Dalek Happy Hour. They actually wanted to actually do a Dalek TV show, but they said no. That was reason. probably a very good point. Those who do not remember the past. Um, okay, so I had another problem. I had a lot of problems with this this episode. Um, this is definitely my least favorite Stephen Moffat episode, um, I think. Did he write The Victory of the Daleks? No. No. Okay, this is definitely my least favorite Stephen Moffat episode, mainly because I feel like they were trying to put a lot of stuff into it, and it, it didn't... It didn't flow the way a really good Stephen Moffat episode see, was. See, I think I think if we're talking least favorite Moffat episodes, mine has to be the the, the Angel to Carter um, with the Byzantine. Yeah, sure. That's probably my least favorite. Well, I like the Weeping Angels. I didn't like them included in that. But I still I, I have more problems with this than I that did. One of them is um, so they're in the Parliament of the Daleks, mm -hmm. right? So it's Rory and Amy and the Doctor and the Tardis. But how did the Tardis get there? It's not like the, the, the Daleks zapped the Doctor, knocked him unconscious, then got into his TARDIS and brought him there. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time they haven't... They, they, they've stolen the TARDIS before. 
I mean, it's not like they didn't know where the TARDIS was. It was on Skyro. He had to arrive there. That's true. And they could have easily taken it with a tractor beam. They'd done it before. I mean, it's not oh. anything new or different. That's true. They could have just picked it up and yeah. But yeah. Why bring it with them on the ship? Um, it's like, it's the Doctor's only means of escape. It's a powerful device. Oh. Anyway. They, they, right they, they wanted, the, they've always wanted the, the full-fledged technology of the Time Lords. That is true. That would have, that would have been it. I mean, that was everything they've ever wanted. Uh, okay. There's some really wonderful things in here. Uh, yeah, it's still going. Okay. All right. So they got to the planet. The planet is infested with all manner of Daleks. Yes. Uh, we I love I did. I did think Rory's statement was hilarious, making fun of the colorful Daleks. Oh yes. That yes, was yeah. great. What color? They are doing something which I, I they made fun of themselves. It was great. They are making Rory a much better character. Mm -hmm. um, and there's interesting, the dynamic between Rory and Amy is changing um, quite a bit. Um, and what scares the hell out of me is that fifth episode now. Oh, I have a theory about that. I want to say, I want to explain that though at the end of, at the end of this one. I have a theory, uh, I have a theory, it could be, which is, anyway. Um, all right, so Souffle Girl, Jenna Louise Coleman. We get to see JLC for the first time. Yes. Um, and even if, do, do you feel that this is our, our our companion? Is she portraying the companion? No. 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 Okay. No. Uh, because clearly the name's different. There is a relation between the two characters. They're not good. They're not the same character. Well, what we didn't get is her middle name, so uh, she could easily... Uh, here's the thing, and the reason is, I, I'm going to agree with you, because I hope it's not the same character, because if it is the same character, we get a River Song situation where the yeah. Doctor is River and um, Oswin slash Clara is the Doctor, whereas he knows what's going on with her timeline and he goes back to her beginning and travels with her until it splits and that, that wouldn't work. Well, I mean, it also, it also could be a Ramona situation where, you know, they find a Ramona or a Susan and they decide to copy her. And I'll be right back. I need to get some more water. Okay. Before I lose my mind. Okay, so, um... <laughs> Keep going. All right, so, uh, do you think that we are dealing with, uh... <laughs> it's not a squirrel. Um... It's a baby. So, it's a baby. Uh, so we're not dealing with, with that. Um, did you like her? I liked her, but it's one of those things where I liked her for this episode. Uh -huh. I don't know how much I would have liked her over a period of time. Sure. Just because, like, her big thing was she was in there. Yeah. She was this genius that was hacking into the Dalek system and making soufflés and stuff. But how'd she get the milk? Yeah, I know. How'd she get the eggs? And the eggs. So. All right. So, because um, we should probably wait for David before we talk about the, the, the finish, because he would be mad otherwise, I'm sure. Um, but uh, Rory meets the Daleks for the very first time, uh, because to my knowledge, he hasn't met them before. There were Daleks at Stonehenge mm -hmm. at the Pandorica opens into the Big Bang. I haven't gone back and watched those, but I don't think Rory was downstairs when it happens. He's up up on the level shooting Amy. Yeah. So technically, he has never met a Dalek before, um, previous to this episode. So he doesn't really know to be frightened. Yeah. Which, which is kind of interesting. And um, truthfully, they, they look like big salt and pepper shakers. And they're they, not really that frightening looking. They aren't. They aren't. Um, so we get the eggs moment. Yeah, that's that was Where he finds, amazing. he hands the, the Dalek back its ball. Um, and we get egg sturm mid Nate, uh, which is, was well, a good moment. Yeah. It was actually a decent, decent moment because you have this kind of nod to the past and you have this, um, the kind of past and, and modern kind of collide, and that's pretty cool. Um, and I still, I still waiting for them to do something where Rory actually kicks someone's ass. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sorry if I get every a chance to live for two thousand years, and my brain has been programmed to be a Roman soldier. I do expect Rory to, to every once in a while actually flip out, flip out, and just like up. come through somebody. Um, Maybe well, he's going to do that to some angels with some sticks or something. <laughs> God, that would be really bad. Like um, Matrix and Weeping Angels. No, oh God, no, <laughs> terrible, terrible, bad. Just wipe that from your mind. <laughs> it was kind of joke. 
Any, yeah, I know. Any any physical combat with the, the Weeping Angels, if, if that ever happens where we actually have a fight where they're actually fighting the angels, then that that's it. I'm, I'll, I will be done. Um, all right. Uh, I feel like we're circling the drain. There's this, elef yeah. there's this large Dalek in the middle of the room. We can't really talk about it. Um, and he's, he's off that way now, and I haven't seen him come back. All right. So uh, there's apparently millions of Daleks in the asylum, but we don't get to see a lot of them. We do get to see some prequels. Cool there's that moment where um, uh, Amy is now infested with um, the Nano Cloud, which very cool, like the Nano Cloud. Do you remember the first time we see the Nano Cloud? Doctor Dance's empty child. They're the nano the, the nano genes from the uh, the hospital capsule that um, Captain Jack okay. is chasing. And so what they basically do is they transform whatever the dominant life form is. And of course, on uh, for the empty child, the dominant life form was the small child with the gas mask on, and this dominant life form is a dog. It turns into a dog. I think that's very cool. I hope they don't use it again. Yeah. Um, but I think that was really neat. But we got Amy turning into it, and we have that moment where the, the hilarious fourth... moment of Amy. Which one? You've never been to Scotland. Oh well, that okay. That is true. That's I'm I'm glad you, that was your hilarious moment because I thought you know the part where her brain is being eaten uh, and she had that conversation for four times. That's what I was referring to. No, but that, that was hilarious. Quite the, so Scot funny. the Scotland part was pretty funny. Yes, I'm not Scottish. I kind of wish I was, but I think if I were, I, I probably would have found that pretty damn amusing even more so than I did. Um, Be angry too. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh, we didn't mention that the Doctor has a new nickname. He's no longer the oncoming Tin store. Boy. He, well, oh, he's Tin <laughs> and Boy. And the Predator. And the Predator. Which oh my goodness. I have yet to have see. You seen, have you seen the little cartoon online? It's got a little baby Dalek. Oh, yes. The... And then the mom Dalek. And the little baby Dalek is asking about the Predator. And is the Predator in his closet? And the Dalek, the mom Dalek is like, affirmative. The, the Predator can materialize anywhere. So he could be in your closet. Yeah, I think that's. I thought it's that was so very cute. Funny. I'm actually surprised no one has shown a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger looking at Matt Smith, telling him he's he's one ugly, or or at Matt Smith with a one of those little faces, um, which I don't need to see that. But I'm actually surprised it happened. It's now on the internet, so it's, it's, it's gonna happen. Yeah. Just like uh, Matrix, so we be angels. <laughs> so we we get. We <laughs> what Davey will see when he edits this video. What? I can't leave you guys alone for a moment. Not in nature, you can't. Um, <laughs> so you've got this situation where um, Amy is is tripping a little bit. Her brain is getting eaten by these little little nanites, uh, and she sees a room full of um, well dressed people. people in the 1920s. What do you think yeah. of that scene? I thought that was interesting. The little ballet girl and ooh 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 little ballet girl. You know what's awesome about little ballet girl? What? Um, when we reveal that the the people are actually Daleks. The Dalek playing the little ballet girl, I think, is the last. It's definitely different from all the other Daleks. It's not any of the RTD, the Russell T. Davis Daleks. Um, I think it's an original Dalek. I think it's probably... You can't cut. They're like, all right, be really careful. No one breathe on this thing. Just get it to go in a circle. So there's probably a guy in a tricycle inside of him. Because <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, that's how the Daleks were originally used. Mm -hmm. uh, just going in a circle there. Um, tricycle with the roof, actually. They mentioned that, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see. Uh... Uh, I am, am I am now, now in, going around in circles waiting so, on so Davy to come back. Davy hurt himself. He has a tooth problem. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. There's something we can talk about. Um, so they go to, and I actually found this really disappointing. One, it's obvious that Daleks have no idea how to um, keep other Daleks from moving anywhere because they the, the, the mode they seem to be using is chaining them to walls. And it has never worked. Like every Dalek that's been chained to a wall can just move forward to pop the chain. Yeah. But they mention Daleks who are in the ICU, intensive care unit for for Daleks who have fought in the worst battles. Yeah. And they mention Spiridon, Kemble, Vulcan, Exelon, and Iridus. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I had just seen Death to the Daleks, which is um, uh, was released, I guess, last month, or depending on when you see this, last month, um, John Pertwee episode. Um, actually, possibly one of the best Dalek episodes next to Genesis in the original, or the first and last episodes of the original. Um, Exelon is the, is the planet where they, they fight the Daleks in that one, so that one was pretty cool. Um, I thought that was really cool, and, but the problem is none of those Daleks, and this is me being nitpicky as a nerd, and I would not have been this way a year ago, would I also like to mention that this is my very first episode 
of Gallifrey Pirate Radio where I'm reviewing a current episode. Yep, a new episode, a not new just episode, a DVD not review. Just a DVD review. Um, this is me being a nerd. Um, all of those Daleks chained to the walls in the ICU, they're all modern era two Daleks and not classics. Yeah, they so. didn't actually go through one. They'd have to go like fish them out of like rivers in Britain and stuff. They're there, still yeah. in fiberglass containers. Um, yeah, so that was a little disappointing to me. Now, admittedly, someone could, could out-nerd me and say, but Drew, because they even heard that, Drew, it's not the machine, it's the Dalek inside. Couldn't they have taken this concussed, slimy mutant, because they are technically mutants, uh, and moved them into a modern day area? Well, I would go, aha! Sure, why not? Um, uh, then we get to this emotional scene after she slaps him, um, where and we that get to was the argument. very, very old. Oh, who loves you more? Yes. Uh, when I'm, they make up, and I, I was in tears. I'm a girl. <laughs> so crying makes you a girl. Yeah, I guess I was so. such a girl with then dinosaurs are, on yeah, the spaceship. Yeah. Not for I this was, one. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I look. I'm sorry. I, I have to agree with Rory. I think Rory loves Amy more than Amy loves Rory. Um, uh, I I don't for an instant believe Amy gives Rory up just because she can't have kids. Um, because, uh, but. I believe that is, in fact, a major plot point, and Davy was just talking about that major plot point. So we're talking about yes. the fact that she can't have kids, and that's why she let Rory He's go. He's back. Yes. So, uh, how do you? What do you think? We we we've, we've been circling the the um, yes, we've been, we've been circling the tricycle. Oswin for you. In a, in a uh, so did you see the logical? Did you see the uh, the surprise ending coming? Uh. Well. Uh, the, well, what happened to the dialects? No. The surprise ending. How the episode ends. Sorry. What? With Oswin. Oswin being... Oh, oh, oh I, oh, I knew that within the first, like, ten minutes of meeting her. Okay. No, that was not a surprise at all for me. Okay. Because just for the shape of the room, how everything, yeah. with the way she was looking at the monitor. Yeah, her, her board, the way it was. Because honestly, I honestly thought she was an evolved form of the human factor dialogue. Gotcha. That's, and that's why I was like, okay, because Oswin, oh, Omega, because one, 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 one of them was called Omega Omega. He kept, he kept changing the name back and forth. Right. And I was like, maybe this is an evolved form of one. And I was like, that's going to be very clever on Moffat's part. Yeah. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about you, Angela? Did you, did you see it coming? I did see it coming, but I also was hoping because, you know, <laughs> we wanted that happy ending. And, and that part, like, that whole ending of the episode, I was in tears. So, Dr. P does that to me. Large statue on um, Scaro made me think. Uh, shape of the room made me think. Seeing through the monitor mm -hmm. made me think. Uh, the part that threw me was the fact that um, you could hear her voice over yeah. the monitor, uh, so everyone heard her voice. Um, I, I figured voice. it out, but um, it was one of those one of but ten see, here's possibilities. The other I thought thing. it could have right been right from the beginning. Where do you get the milk? Yeah, and that's no, why I know. Like, oh. Well, it could be Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, they've, yeah, they've got they've got um yeah yeah whatever those things are called <laughs> replicators. Oh, Ray, hot. Yeah, no, I mean <laughs> it's Doctor Who. It's sci-fi. I mean, I mean honestly, and I thought he beat us over the head. But where do you get the milk and eggs? Where do you get the milk and the eggs? It was like he was trying to be clever with that whole thing and give you hints, but I thought it was just like, okay. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. He was being clever, but you, us, we've watched this. You actually yeah. know what the human factor Daleks are. Keep in mind that Doctor Who now is seeing higher yeah. numbers than it ever has mm -hmm. in its entire history it's with the exception of City of Death. Um, and it is mainstream. So people are watching this for the first time. That may very well have been the first Yo. episode. Yo. Who the man? <laughs> oh God! I, I hope he never uses that line ever again. Well, he said he wasn't, so we, we may very well come back. Um, I don't trust Moffat. <laughs> okay. He doesn't uh, do anything. So for, he does everything for a reason. <laughs> Oswin deletes the the doctor from the memory banks of the Daleks. What do you think? I think that's the theme of the. Uh, I think that's going to be the theme leading up to the 50th anniversary. That no one remembers the doctor. No, that you know that we're going to be forced to find out who the doctor is. Sure. Um, I thought it was absolutely brilliant because you know how they said they, they were going to make the dialect scarier? They basically, they took away the reason why the dialects were evolving. 
Yeah. They don't have to evolve anymore. Sure. Because they don't have the big threat. Um, because they don't know the Doctor anymore. And that's why, you know, they were always... Everything they did, all their motivations, all stem back from that very first time he went to Skyro. Uh, they've even said it time and time again themselves. If it wasn't for the Doctor, they never would have done anything. Yeah, they would have just stayed on the planet and something, 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 something. Yeah, I mean, they never would have pursued time travel. So it's going to be really interesting to see what's going to happen the next time he actually encounters them. Um which I don't think is going to happen for a while. All right, so not knowing who the Doctor is is a theme. There's another theme I'd like to point out, um, and I'm just going to do the first part of my evidence is um, the Doctor apparently plays Triangle and Carmen. Um, so I, I, but I, that's all yeah. I'm going to say for right now we'll go about the next episode. So are we, are we what, done? There's actually, I don't know if you brought this up, which, I mean, I just want to talk about the season in general really quick. This is going to be the first season where there are going to be no two-parters. There's going to be no two-parters. Um, which is going to be very, very interesting. And my, oh, oh, God, we missed a glaring... We, we totally... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. What? We didn't talk about the title sequence. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, the, the new title sequence. And the interesting thing is, is every title sequence is going to be different this year. Sure. Well, we, we they, got they to said see, that. We get to see a Dalek and a dinosaur one, so that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but they said that it's going to change every episode. The uh, the sequence, um, it's going to be it's going to be much much different, uh, which I think are all clues mm -hmm. um, to what's going on because that's what Moffat does. I mean, he gave us a clue with the bow ties in the first season. Um, if if the story was taking place in the past or the present, based on that the the date in which all hell breaks loose mm -hmm. um, at the wedding. So I mean, there's Moffat's always doing something sure. to give us clues. Though, and one of the things you didn't help mention, we should probably wrap this up so we can look at the dinosaurs yes. before the battery runs out. Uh, in fact, I won't even mention that. We'll, we'll, we'll mention that in the notes. Um, all right, so uh, we're not going to even bother with pond life. Oh, by the way, this is what you missed um, for the prequel to this episode. Mm -hmm. The doctor's sitting at a cafe about to eat a jammy dodger. Um, he looks over, and there is a, a headless monk sitting at the table with him um, who explains to him that um, somebody needs his help, and the doctor doesn't do house calls. And uh, they transport the Doctor to various different locations, thinking that the Doctor is dreaming, when in fact the Doctor is probably still in his TARDIS, and this headless monk is a psychic entity, and has summons him to Scarrow, and that's how it ends. It's really, it's like a minute long. Um, but we had a headless monk image, hmm. I believe that's what it is. It's a purple robe figure. But that's why he says you went through great distance to summon me. Wait, question. You yes. said purple? I believe so. I'm going to have to take a look at that. Yeah. They may not have been ahead of the monk then. It might not have been. It's true. That's why I need to take a look at it. Sure. Um, it doesn't specifically say a headless monk, um, but it, you know. But yeah. no, it would be interesting to take a look to, to see what it actually looks like. Yeah. Um, so what do you give this episode? Derpy Tardis-wise. Oh, I, 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 I wasn't even watching it Derpy Tardis-wise. Um... Uh, but if I mean honestly, because if, if I had to give it something, I would probably say I think it's one of the better uh, openers that they've done. Um, you know, for a season. I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'd probably give it like uh, maybe three and a half. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a, a nice, solid episode. Yeah. Angela, yeah, three. Three. Um, I give it a three and a half, um, which I, is fairly generous. Three and a half, but. Uh... And now there's a crow that is multiple crows bigger than a dog walking towards us. Um, <laughs> yes, but no, I mean it was it, it was it was a fun episode. Yeah. I've seen much worse. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right. So, so let's let's sign this out and then we'll move on to the next. So we're done. Yeah. So yeah. bye. Bye. Peace. Love you. Mwah. <laughs>